Hi everyone, my name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com and welcome to my sew along for my first No Me pattern. The number is ME2002. I am so excited about No Me Patterns and Mimi G. She's created something that's absolutely amazing for the sewing community. And thank you all so much for your support. Already, you guys are buying the patterns, you guys are reposting, you guys are resharing. Y'all are just amazing. So thank you all so much for your support of No Me. In this video, we're gonna be sewing view A of my pattern. Let's go ahead and review the pattern pieces that we're gonna to need to sew view A of ME2002. Again, we're gonna be making view A on my pattern, Know Me ME2002. My pattern is available in three different pattern sizes. This envelope goes from 10 to 18. The second one goes from 20W to 28W. And then the last pattern size goes from 30W to 38W. To know what fabrics would be best for the top and the pan on the pattern, you can flip to the back. On the back of the pattern envelope, there is a list of suggested fabrics. For view A and B, you would need a stretch knit, so jersey, interlock, rib knit, ITY knit, sweater knits are recommended. For view C and D, cotton blends, denim, linen blends, cord, stretch wovens. So again, be sure to just flip on the back of the pattern for some suggested fabrics if you would like to know what you can make both of the garments on the pattern in. Let's go ahead and take a look at what comes inside the pattern. So first thing you have is your pattern instructions. You can review this. I always like to review my pattern instructions just so I know what I'm doing. Also make sure that you look at the cutting layout so that you're laying out your pieces correctly onto your fabric. You will also have all of the pattern pieces for all of the views on the pattern. So for the tops, the tie, and the pants, these are the pattern pieces and you can just cut these out according to your size, lay them onto your fabric and cut everything out. If you would like a video on how I cut out my pattern as well as my fabric, then be sure to check the description box below. Let's review the pattern pieces that we're gonna need to cut out to make view A of this pattern. The first pattern piece that we would cut out is pattern piece number one. This is the front. We wanna cut one on the fold. Be sure to pay attention to the cutting line for view A. Right here it says cut here for A. If you want the shorter version of the top, then you would cut here for B. If you are looking for the finished garment measurements, they have them printed onto the front pattern here. So this would be the finished bust measurement for the top. Pattern piece number two, this is the back. We need to cut one on the fold. We will need pattern piece number three. This is the sleeve. We will need to cut two. If you have full biceps, you may wanna take a look at the finished garment measurement here. Again, this is around the bicep, which is the fullest part of your arm. So just make sure that you take a look at this measurement to make sure that your arms will fit comfortably into the sleeve. The last pattern piece that we will need is the belt. This is pattern piece number four. We will need to cut two. This is optional, but I will be showing you how to sew it up in this video. For the size that I have cut out, I've cut out the size 18, so that is the size that I'll be cutting my top. And for fabric, I am using a brown rib knit. I really love this fabric. It has fantastic recovery, and I just love the color for fall. So this is what I'm gonna be using for the sew along. Once you have all your pattern pieces cut out, you transfer your markings, let's start sewing. The first thing that we're gonna do is take pattern piece number one and two, again, our front and back and we're right sides facing, we're going to open them up. And we are going to stitch around our shoulder. So we're gonna be stitching right here at the top, back stitching at the beginning, and then going all the way over to our shoulder, back stitching here. After we have that first stitch in, we're gonna do a little bit of reinforcing right here in the curve. So we will just stitch right on top of our first stitch right around the curve. But first, let's go ahead and grab some pins. And with the right sides facing, we're just gonna match up our shoulders here and you should have transferred a notch at your shoulder. You want to go ahead and pin there. And again, just pin along the shoulder here, as well as the neck. I put a snip here where my fold line is. That way I will know where it is when it's time to fold it. You also have the option if you would like to go ahead and finish off your route edges separately that way, once we have it sewn, you can just press your seam open flat. That is an option if you wanna go ahead and do that. 
Once you have both of your shoulder seams pinned, we can go to the sewing machine. We're gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end. I will be using a straight stitch. I know I'm using knit fabric, but I'm gonna use a straight stitch for this stitch around here and when I do the reinforcing along the curve. Our seam allowance is a 5 8 of an inch and be sure to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Okay, I've just finished stitching my shoulder seams together and I went to go and finish off my seam allowances, but I have to do a little troubleshooting with my serger. It's just not working. I've been testing this out all day. I'm just gonna leave my seam allowances unfinished, um, which is fine because that is an option when you're sewing with knit fabrics. Knit doesn't tend to fray. So if you have knit fabric, you can go without finishing off with a serger if you would like. That's what I'm gonna do again, just until I do some troubleshooting on my machine. Okay, I have removed the serger stitch from over here. So again, I'm just gonna leave my edges raw. You all can definitely finish yours if you'd like. I'm gonna go to the ironing board and press my seam open flat. But first, I do wanna clip into this curve just to kind of relax it a little bit. So go ahead and grab some scissors and we're just gonna put a few snips again right here in the curve. Don't confuse it though with your fold line. If you place a snip or marking for your fold line, don't confuse the snips for that. I'm just gonna place a few here, right into the seam allowance and do the same thing for the other side. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and just press my seam open flat. Okay, I've just came back from the ironing board. I went ahead and pressed my seams open flat. So this is what they look like here. And while I was there, I folded in the neck edge along the fold line and I pressed that down. Now that we have the fold line pressed over, we can go ahead and tack it down. If you prefer to do it by hand, you can grab a needle and thread and you can just tack the portion that you folded over onto your seam allowance. It doesn't need to go onto the top. You can just keep it right here in the seam allowance. Just put a couple loops of thread if you prefer to do it by machine, you can grab a pin and on the right side here, I am going to poke it right into the seam, making sure that I come out on the other seam here along the inside. And we can do a few tacks right here, just two or three stitches back and forth right here on the machine that will also tack it down. So you have the option to do it by hand or by machine. I'm gonna go ahead and do mine by machine here. Just put a couple stitches to tack it down. This does work best if you have exact or really close coordinating thread that way you won't be able to see it. All right, now that we have it tacked down, we can go ahead and start working on our sleeves. So when I'm working with knits, I like to install my sleeves using the flat sleeve method. You can do the sleeve according to what it says in step three of my pattern, but I do like to just do a flat sleeve install and then stitch all the way down my side seam and my underarm seam in one continuous stitch. If you have a different preference, again, check out step three, and that will have you adding two rows of gathering stitches to the sleeve cap, and then easing it into the armhole. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my sleeves now. You should have transferred notches. Here are my double notches for the back, single notches for the front. So I'm gonna grab the sleeve that corresponds to those markings. Single notch here double notch here and I always put a notch at the top of my pattern where it has the circles at along the top that corresponds to the shoulder. So I'm going to pin there first right along the shoulder matching up that notch and my shoulder seam and then I'm going to pin at my notches here. So I'm going to pin at the double notches and I'm also going to pin at the single notch over here now I can fill in the rest of the sleeve. So we can just go ahead and open that out. And for me, when you see it like this and it looks like, okay, this is a lot more sleeve than it is top, if you just kind of line up the raw edges, it really just kind of goes in like so. So that is what I'm gonna do. I just lined up the raw edges 
and I'm just gonna start pinning. I'm gonna pin all the way around the sleeve cap. All right, so everything is starting to fit in nicely. I did not stretch anything. I'm just matching up the raw edges. Once I have it pinned, I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and stitch all the way around and back stitch at the end. When I am sewing it like this, using the flat sleeve method, I like to make sure that I have the sleeve facing down on the feed dog. So this portion of the sleeve is facing up toward me. I find that the feed dogs kind of help the sleeve cap stay stable and not stretch out as opposed to how it would possibly do. It would possibly get ripples and waves and puckers if you have this up against the presser foot. So I like to have that down up against the feed dog to help push it through without getting puckers. Let's go ahead and sew it now. All right, I have my sleeves installed. Here's what it looks like on the outside. You wanna make sure that your sleeve is in there nice and smooth like so. Once you have your sleeve installed, this would be the time when I would finish off my seam with my serger. Again, finishing off your seams with knit is totally optional. I do love the look of it and I wish my serger was cooperating right now, but she's not, so I'm just gonna leave my seams raw. But if yours is good to go, um, I would recommend going ahead and finish it off. And again, you don't need a serger. You can use a zigzag stitch, pinking shears, overlock stitch. There's other things that you can use. Um, matter of fact, I think I will go ahead and use my pinking shears. Let me grab those. Okay, here are my pinking shears. I'm going to use this to finish off my seams. And I'm going to go back up here and trim these off too, just so everything looks the same. So go ahead and again, finish off your seams using whatever method that you have. I'm using pinking shears. Okay, I have trimmed my seams. So now I have pinking shears as my finish that I'm using. I even did my shoulder seam area here as well. So again, go ahead and finish off your seams with whatever finishing method that you're using. And now the next step is with right sides facing. We can go ahead and lay our top together like so. And we can go ahead and pan the underarm seam together. We're going to match up the notches on our sleeve. Pin that in place. I'm going to put another pin here at the sleeve. One more. And now we're going to pin down to our marking that we transferred where we will be stopping it. There's also a notch here along the side seam. You can pin there. And at our marking, I have my marking here. I'm gonna pin it through, make sure that I go through on the other side. Okay, and so now we can go ahead and begin stitching here. I'm gonna back stitch. I'm gonna stitch all the way up here to the end of the sleeve and I'm gonna back stitch there. We can go ahead and do the other side the same way. So go ahead and match up your seam, pin at your notches and pin at the marking that you transfer. That is where we're gonna start stitching at. Okay, I have my side seams sewn down to our marking as well as the underarm seam that is sewn as well. If anyone has any questions regarding the stitch, I'm still using a straight stitch. I do wanna show you all that my seams are still stretching and moving. So just play around with your fabric and your stitches even here on along the side. 
when it's gonna go over my body. I'm not having any issues with the stretch. So I just wanted to mention that in case anyone was wondering, was I still on a straight stitch or did I go to a zigzag stitch? I'm still on a straight stitch, but again, test out your fabric and see what stitch works best for your fabric and your machine. Once we have the side seams and the underarm seam sewn, now we can go ahead and finish it off. So again, you can do your serger. I'm gonna grab my pinion shears and go ahead and trim down my underarm seam and the side seam. All right, I've gone ahead and finished off my side seams with my pinking shears. I've also went ahead and finished off the side edges. You can see it here. I finished off the lower edge of the top. I also finished off the sleeve hem of the top with the pinky shears. And I went back and finished off the neck edge around the top with my pinky shears. So all of my seams are finished. So now we can go ahead and go to the next step, which is to finish off our sleeve. So for our sleeve, our hem is an inch and a quarter. So you can go ahead and fold up an inch and a quarter. So you can finish off your raw edge with your serger, or if you like, when you press up your inch and a quarter, then you can fold in a quarter of an inch and then you can stitch close to the inner pressed edge here. For me, I'm just gonna fold mine up and I'm just gonna stitch close to my raw edge here. I'm gonna go ahead and press up my inch and a quarter and I'm gonna stitch around this. I will use a zigzag stitch. This is a little bit smaller of an opening and I definitely want this to keep all of it stretched. So I'm going to go ahead and press this. I'm gonna do it for both of the sleeves, fold up an inch and a quarter. And I like to just open up my seam allowance. You can press yours if you like. Make sure that you measure it so that you are in fact on an inch and a quarter. Press that up and then stitch it in place close to the opening. Again, I will be doing a zigzag stitch. Okay, I have my sleeve hems sewn and I have pressed them in place. This is what the outside looks like. This is what the inside of the stitch looks like here. The last thing for us to do for the top is to do the hem of the top. So the first thing that we're going to do is a 5 eighth of an inch hem along the lower edges. So you just want to go ahead and press up 5 eighth of an inch. Just like we did for the sleeve, you can choose to do a serger on the edge. I will say be careful with the serger and make sure that your feed isn't stretching out your fabric because this is on the greatest stretch. So you just want to be careful to make sure that you're not pulling it and causing ripples and waves when you are serging it. You can stitch close to the edge or you can fold under a quarter of an inch if you like and then you can stitch close to the fold. The choice is yours. Once we have this sewn in place, then we can sew the side openings closed. Be sure to back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and I am still using a zigzag stitch for this hem. I'm back from the sewing machine. As you can see, I've stitched my lower hems in place. So this is what the back one looks like here. I stitched really close to my raw edge. I did it for the front as well. And then on this side, I went ahead and finished off the sides. That way you can see what we're doing. What we're doing for the stitching is after we have it folded, you're gonna start pressing down on one side your back stitch. You're gonna stitch all the way up to where your opening is, the marking that we transferred. You can go past that marking by like a quarter of an inch. Then you're going to pivot and come across and then pivot and then come down and finish off this side of the opening. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so now we can go ahead and go over to this side. You want to press up your 5 eighth of an inch 
and then we're going to begin stitching on one end we're going to stitch all the way up close to the raw edge or your folded edge or your folded pressed edge pivot across and then stitch it down to the other side Okay, I have both of the sides of my top sewn. So the hem of my top is finished. I also went ahead and added a little label here. This label is from Sarah Hearts. Thought it was really cute. So I just zigzagged the label into my top. Now we can go ahead and make the tie. With right sides facing, you want to go ahead and pin on your notched edge. You should have transferred a notch here. Grab a pin and we're gonna pin there. Once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that we have it sewn, you can press your seam open. Give that a nice press. I'm just gonna kind of finger press mine to open it. And now we're gonna fold this right sides facing. So I'm going to just fold the tie again so that it's right sides facing. I'm gonna grab a few pins. First, I wanna make sure that I pin here along the center of the tie and match up those seams. And then we can just go down the length of the tie, folding it right sides together. And I'm gonna just place a couple pins so we do need to leave an opening so we can flip the tie right side out. So I'm gonna put a pin here and I'm gonna put a pin here. I'm gonna start stitching here, I'm gonna back stitch and I'm gonna stitch all the way down to the corner here. Then I'm gonna pivot and stitch all the way down to the point of the tie, back stitch when I get here. And then I'm gonna come back to this pin and I'm gonna back stitch here. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. So my opening will be right here. And sometimes it helps if you like put an additional pin or something that way you know this is an opening so don't stitch there. I am using a zigzag stitch for my tie. Once you have your tie sewn, we can go ahead and trim off the corners and some of the seam allowance. Now we can go ahead and flip it right side out. Once you have it trimmed, so find your opening and just start to turn your tie out to the right side. Okay, I have my tie turned right side out. I'm loving that my center seam right here is matching up. So now you can just find your opening. You can give everything a really good press and you can either slip stitch your opening closed or you can do an edge stitch. So with an edge stitch, you just wanna make sure you have everything folded and you're just gonna stitch really close to the edge of the opening. Or again, if you prefer hand sewing, just go ahead and grab a needle and thread and then you can just slip stitch your opening closed. Once you have your tie finished, you are all done with view A as well as the tie belt for my pattern ME2002. 
Well, that is all for the video and I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Tag me, Brittany J. Jones, over on Instagram, as well as Know Me Patterns. If you make this, I would absolutely love to see it and reshare it. Thank you all so much again for your support of my pattern, for your support of Know Me. It means so much to all of us. Be sure to like, be sure to comment. I don't know if I said that already. I can't remember. <laughs> But subscribe to the channel and I will see you all in the next one. Blessings, everyone. Bye.